Hello guy, thank you for coming back. Today we are going to generate a React in our client. So first we go to website for create React app here. So when we didn't use create React app command, it was really demanding to configure React app. But thanks to this command, so we actually don't need to install or configure tools like Webpack or Bobbill. They are pre-configured and hidden. So if I briefly explain Webpack and Bobbill, so Webpack is a module bundler that lets us bundle our project files into a single files for production. And Bobbill is to transpile ES6 and JSX to ES5. So now to use this create react app command, so go down to below. So to use this create react app commands, it is recommended to use npx instead of npm. npx is a npm package runner. So if you have npm burden higher than 5.2, so we can use npx. So good thing about npx for create react app command, it will automatically install the latest version of a create react app and npx also encourages us to install packages locally but we are also able to run that one as if they were global and npx checks the local node module further this one and if it's not there it will insert it and run it as if it was a global so now we are going to use this one for create react app so first we go to our editor and then we get our terminal here so first we want to go to directory where we want to put our react app so i'm gonna go to cd client so now we are in here so inside of this client directory so we are gonna put our react app mpx create react app and we can just uh, put that because the, we want to just put all of this inside the client app so if we hit the enter I automatically download all of the packages inside the client now so it will take some time so I'm gonna pause this and then I'm gonna come back after it's done so now we finished a uh, create react app inside our client so if we see inside the client there are a lot of folders and files created automatically so first we are just gonna look at all the folders and file structures so first if we go public and index.html um, this is a page template so, so this is where our React application gets rendered in our browsers and actually we don't have to change the name of this file and we also don't have to change the name of this file the index.js inside the src but the other files we can actually change the name or we can also delete them and if we want to create more folders it has to be inside the src so we can put any js files or css files inside the src or otherwise webpack won't see any of them so it won't be rendered in our browser so before keep explaining about file structure i'm just gonna let you see what will happen if we execute our client so we turn up the terminal and then so if we see this part, so we can use this one, npm run start. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, first I need to go inside the client. Now we are in the just the server, so I just uh, 
Now execute the server, not the client. So I'm going to kill it. And then go to client. And then in here, I'm going to use this one. npm start. So if we see our browser. So our client actually listen to local host 3000 port instead of 5000 that belongs to the, our server. So if we see here, so that is rendered by this folder app.js. So we can see it run react, run react, and this one and this one. So it's actually cool. So this is automatically created by the command create react app. So now we are ready to just uh, make changes as we want to. So if we make some changes here, like hello, and then we just save it, and then we go to here. Yeah, it actually automatically changed without refreshing our pages. That is a good thing about of this react app and if we go back to our editor again and uh, i said before uh, inside the uh, index.html uh, in here our react application get rendered in our browser so if we see here so we can see this root id so in here this root id and if we see this one again, like this app. So this app, this app file. So we see the app file. And this one is rendered in this one. So if we delete this part, then write anything in here. And then we go back in here. Actually, it is render like this. So I hope you can get hold of this file structure a little bit. But you actually don't need to understand everything in here now. And you're going to understand more and more as we do together. So don't worry about it. So if we go back to our React app. So we are going to make it back like this. And if we see here in depth.css, so this is the part for the, our styling. So if we change something in here, yeah, it will change our style in our browser. And there is a, this service worker.js. This service worker is a web API that helps us capture our assets and other files so that when user is offline or on slow network, the page will still be working uh, and with service worker users can still see results on the screen and as such it helps you with a better user experience so service worker is all about adding offline capability to our site so if we see here and yeah, now it is on registers so if we want to turn this on, we can just change this into register instead of on register. And lastly, I want to explain about JSX. So in React, uh, we are using the JSX instead of HTML. So JSX is really similar to HTML. So if we see here, usually in HTML, we use the class instead of class name. If we want to make the label tab, so in here, originally in HTML, we will use just the four and then like this. But in JSS, we need to use HTML4 like this. Will be a little bit different, but it's really similar. So even though you have never experienced about JSS, you don't need to worry about it. You will be used to this very soon. So today, we made a React application inside our client. So I'm gonna delete this part. And thank you for watching this video. 
Uh, in the next video, we are going to talk about the proxy to connect our backend and the client more smoothly. So, I'll see you later. Thank you.